Good evening. Uh, I'd like to open this regular select board meeting, uh, October 22nd, 2018, 7 p.m. in the Callahan World. And those who are able, if you would stand for the Pledge of Allegiance, Ed, would you want Yes, please, please. I pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, liberty, and justice for all. Brittany, could we have the roll call, please? Yep. Mark Stroud? Here. Bob Bishop? Here. Jo John Bertels? Here. <laughs> Ed Holland? Present. John Boyle? Here. Ken Mitchell? Here. Okay, we have uh, a couple sets of minutes um, to approve. And one is, uh, are these regular sessions? Yeah. Uh, September 24th and October 9th. So. Okay. I make a motion we accept uh, September 24th, 2018 minutes as presented. I'll second that. Motion's been made and seconded. Is there any uh, discussion or corrections? Yes, I have one. Okay. Under the Lions Club Circus, uh, it's Paul Tabone and Dan McGinnis, not Kevin... Magner? Magner. Dan McGinnis. Dan McGinnis. Yeah. Okay. Anything else? Nope. Okay. Approved as amended. I'll second that. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Abstentions? Next. Okay, I make a motion we accept the minutes from October 9th, 2018 as presented. I'll second that. Motion's been made and seconded. Is there any discussion or corrections? I have I have one minor, uh, one on page six under the Lacona School Building Committee. Um, The the third the, the second statement of mine under that where it says mid March and early June, uh, it should be uh, mid March between mid March and early June, and where it says the timeline is set by MSPA, that should be a B instead of a P. That's probably the way I pronounce it. And that's all I have. Anything else? Yeah, one just thing. Yes, sir. Under three, you spelled your name. Where's that? Under item uh, bullet point three in the page six and that's six. Right. Six seven. Six or seven. Oh yes. T E L S. Thank you. I didn't even notice it myself. Yeah. <laughs> Anything else? Okay. Motion made is corrected. I'll second that. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Uh, public address to the board. Uh, this is a time when the public may address the board on any item listed on the meeting agenda. Uh, or on any issue or matter of the town. If you intend on addressing the board at this time, we ask that you do the following. Please identify yourself by name, address, or the company or institution you represent. The public address to the board will last no longer than 30 minutes. Please make your comments concise and try not to repeat statements made by others. Please address your comments to the board chair. Discussion or debate on any issue may not take place at this time. Questions on procedural matters may be answered by the chair or their designee. Please be cordial and respectful of others. If anyone wishes to be recognized when an agenda item is discussed by the board, please make the request at this time. This request may be granted by the board chair. Address comments to the board chair and be concise. You don't wish to say anything, right? Not now? Okay. I said enough. So that nobody in the audience there won't be, yeah, there won't be any uh, uh, public address. Thank you. All right. So, first item is uh, an appointment to the Conservation Commission, and this is a. Uh, we have two memos actually. Um, the main one is from our town manager, Mr. Walto, and it's a ratification of appointment to the Conservation Commission, and it says, "I recommend for your ratification the appointment of Dr. Henry J. Rose." 
of 89 North Mountain Road to the Conservation Commission for an initial term to expire on June 30th, 2021. In addition to holding a bachelor's degree in biology with a strong interest in field biology, Dr. Rose is active in many environmental organizations. Among them are Mass Audubon, the Sierra Club, the Trustees of Reservations, Berkshire Natural Resources Council, and the Appalachian Mountain Club. Ratification of this appointment will bring the Commission's roster to a full seven. Members, thank you for your consideration of this appointment. And there's also a recommendation from the uh, Chair of the Conservation Commission, Mr. Sacco, which uh, basically um, reiterates what I just read in Mr. Walco's memo. So, um, is there any discussion? Well, Edward and I are going to recuse ourselves because we're members of the Conservation Commission. Okay. Okay. Is that so? Oh, yes. That's okay. I am a member. Yes. So, <laughs> I just want to. No, 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 I am. Oh, yes, uh, I know you are. So, um, I'll make a motion we approve uh, Henry Rose to the Conservation Commission. I have a second? I'll second. Okay, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? No. Opposed. One up, one opposed. Uh, motion passes. Uh, I'll, I'll open it up to comment because uh, Bobby said you wanted to make a comment about yeah, this. Uh, Henry has been very active right along with the commission. He's been on uh, site inspections with us prior to this. Uh, he has a very strong interest, and I respect his scientific opinion. I think he'd be a great I would second what Bob has just said. Absolutely, very, very much, and really cares about the town. Yeah. I'm sure he will, and uh, I thank him for uh, putting his name in. And, uh, um, this gets the commission up to full yes full yeah. membership, which is good. So, okay. Any other comments, questions? Okay. Our next uh, item is a uh, report on the junk cars, which was uh, requested uh, uh, initially by uh, board member uh, John Boyle, and after that request. Um, the police department went out, as you can see, and I'm not going to read the memos, but they went out and did a, a sweep of the town. Officer DeMauro, uh did the north end, and Officer Levesque did the south end, and Chief Co. personally did all the commercial businesses in town. Uh, it appears to be, in all, uh, about 75 locations that uh, um, were in violation and warning citations were issued and uh, it was there were also letters of explanation that went to those uh, in violation um, telling them how to appeal uh, or request a an extension uh, from the initial 30 days to take care of the situation on their property uh, specifically um, and I'll I'll because these were two locations that were specifically requested to uh, be taken care of, and that was uh, um, Tom's Auto Sales on uh, Pusatonic Street. And uh, Chief Co. And let me just back up with the commercial businesses. Even if there wasn't a violation, he sent a uh, notice to the owner of of the business, just making them aware of the uh, by, of the bylaw. So on this. Uh, uh, particular location. There are 17 vehicles that were unregistered. Uh, the location is allowed six for sale um, and so with regard to that 11 other vehicles uh, were, uh, were on the lot and they will be doing a second sweep of all the citations to see all the violations that remain. Those that remain will be issued another citation with a fine. And then uh, with regard to the property uh, at 1190 um, North Street, Dalton Tractor, uh, there were uh, a number of vehicles and as well as farm and construction equipment uh, that were uh, on the property. And it was found that uh, the property is a R4 residential zone uh, it's not agricultural 
and uh, he's uh, Chief Co spoke with the property owner and then they requested that I call them which I did and I informed uh, them of their uh, um, a way to uh, ask for extensions or uh, to uh, yeah to uh, uh, take care of the situation how to go about doing it so hopefully that will be taken care of within 30 days or we will get an extension letter from 1190 uh, North Street before I go on to the to the other one which did the other issue which the person did uh, request an extension is there any uh, comments or questions about any of this so far I'd like to thank the Dalton Police Department for going out and doing this I mean that sounds like a lot of work <laughs> yes it is look very thorough yeah uh, especially um, going around to the commercial business or commercial properties to find out what they were allowed and what they weren't allowed for vehicles it's time-consuming and uh, I want to thank officer Cohen and his officers for doing this as well or chief Cohen and his officers for doing this as well uh, so any other comments all right now we do have one request for an extension and the letter in front of us um, is from a Mr. Gary Steiner, 10 Home Terrace, uh, with regard to a gray Jeep Cherokee. And it says, to whom this may concern, a great, I, Gary Steiner, would like to respectfully request an extension to remove the SUV Jeep Grand Cherokee at 10 Home Terrace currently for some repair and or for sale. I will handle this matter accordingly. And he is requesting... Uh, he has a scheduled removal date of 11 9 18. So I'll leave it up to discussion with board members. He's allowed up to 30 days. Just one thing, we we'll always get into this. When I'm assuming that the board is going to grant the extension, which I fully support. Oh, when it starts? Yeah. 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 It start, starts up. Starts the extension will start 30 days. You get automatically get 30 days from the date of the right. citation, date of notice. So, I think we'll get uh, if you choose to approve an additional 30 days, it'll be up to 12 9. Because you get 30 days, 30 days from the date of the yeah, so the date of the notice, which was October 9th. So, he has until November 9th to remove the vehicle, and then if he wants to petition for more time, although he well, he's he says schedule removal date is yeah. 11 9. Um, we can grant anywhere up to 30 days, so we could grant them another two weeks if we wanted to, but... How about we just grant them until 11-9? But he has it automatically anyways. I, I, I'm not clear whether he's saying that's when it's supposed to be removed, but he's not going to make it, or whether he's asking to have it, that be the date that he will have it done. I'm taking it really that that's the, the date that he thinks he's supposed to remove it and he wants three days from there. He wants an extension from there, just in case. You yes. You mean from the night? You said from the night. That's what I nine. think. Yeah. I uh, think he, he says schedule removal. Because he probably didn't get it to the to October 9th. Quite quite honestly, I would just I would just give him to December 9th. Yes, I, I think that would avoid any confusion, any possible uh, misinterpretation. December 9th. Yes. But um, you know that that's my opinion. I agree. With you. I would mean. Okay, I need a okay. motion. Though. I'll make a motion. We grant an extension to twelve nine eighteen to Gary Steiner of ten mobile. Ten mobile. Oh, ten home terrace. Ten home terrace. I'll second that. Motion's been made and seconded. Is there further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Abstentions? Second. Okay. Uh, the next the next item is uh, Berkshire Gas Resident notification letter of April 27, 2018. And I'm not going to go through the entire explanation of what we did last meeting. But at last last meeting, we I presented this letter that's in front of us uh, to a resident who had contacted me, who was uh, who found out that we weren't going to be paving Pleasant Street, and. Uh, we looked into the matter, or we we didn't look into the matter at that time, 
it was more of a request on what how to proceed with the with the issue and at the end of that meeting um, two things came out of it or at the end of the discussion two things came out of it and the first thing was uh, Mr. Boyle uh, suggested that we speak with uh, our highway superintendent John Ruffley who is with us tonight um, to see if there was any uh, type of uh, conversation with Berkshire Gas with regard to this and we were also going to invite Berkshire Gas to, to our meeting tonight. Um, Mr. Ruffley is here. Berkshire Gas uh, is not here, but they did um, send a letter. I'll, I'll, I'm going to paraphrase it not now, but in a moment. I just want to give people a, a timeline here. So on the 12th, um, I tried to get a hold of John, but he was tied up with, with some matters at the highway department. I didn't get to talk talk with Mr. Ruffley until the 15th of October um, and at that point in time um, he told me about this annual letter that or request that he gets from Berkshire Gas every year uh, with regard to street projects. Um, he had gotten this letter and filled it filled out the request um, in late March of this year. Um, John, wanna, would you mind explaining this this letter, or what it is, or instead of me doing it? Okay. Okay. Yeah. So the letter, we get the letter annually. Um, it's a request for um, construction activities that the town's going to be doing or planning. Um, so I, I usually don't fill it out. This was the first time I fill it out since I worked here because you know we're never positive on what projects. You know we have a capital plan, but it doesn't always you know go to. Well, seeing that you mentioned that, I'll just say that we also have a copy of our capital improvement plan, project plan, yeah. which um, Mr. Walto. Uh, put together back in June of 2017, and in it states the streets that the highway department was going to take, and those those streets, and this is a five-year plan. Those streets were uh, Old Windsor, Beverly, Ensign, Hale, Franklin, Cliff, and Miriam. Those are the only streets listed. Uh, so. That's the, that's the official list, so to speak, that the town was working on. Um, but go ahead, John. I just wanted to get that in. So with that said, um, there's a cover letter that they send along with the um, request for construction activities form, which you have. That's the form that's the streets are listed. So in that letter, it states, we understand that budgeting, funding, and circumstances play a role in determining which projects um, receive approval. So that right there pretty much tells you it's, they're not, they're not, this isn't a set in stone um, set of streets or projects, and uh, I just don't believe that they should use it as their marketing tool, you know, our, our list street list as their marketing tool um i guess unless they came to the board and maybe got our during the year do you get requests not just you get requests from companies when they have projects that will affect the road yeah yeah does Berkshire gas do that on a, on a regular basis uh, even though you get this letter yeah okay yeah it's a it's a permitting process okay so um, do you have anything else you want to add right at this point? I think that's okay. pretty much it. Okay, so, um, so after, after this conversation, we tried to get a hold of Berkshire Gas to send us that list, and we never were able to get that. Correct. And uh, on the 16th, we did get a copy of the list from the Berkshire Eagle, who was able to uh, get it, Larry Parnes, uh, faxed it to Mr. Walto. So we did have that list. And then after that came the uh, article in the paper of the Berkshire Eagle explaining the, the situation to the best of their knowledge. Um, also on the 18th, 
John found copies of the cover letter and faxed them to us so that we knew uh, what was in the cover letter. However, they weren't, it wasn't the cover letter of 2018 as we got up to tonight. Uh, the, the newest one that you could find was 2013. However, from 2000, from year 2000 and 2001 and 2013, the letter essentially never changes or hadn't changed. And you said it's still the same at this point in time? It is. Okay, the wording is still the same. So, uh, again, uh, they asked for um, a priority list or wish list of streets that uh, highway uh, may be uh, uh, doing construction work or reconstructing the, the roadway. Um, give me a moment here, folks. I think as for as for paperwork, that's a, that's about it. But as I said, Berkshire Gas uh, sent us a uh, letter <coughs> explaining the situation, which everyone has a copy of, and there's one in our mailbox. It came from uh, Christopher, Christopher Farrell, who is the manager, uh, corporate communications and government relations. And I'm not going to read the whole letter. It's it's paraphrasing, uh, and there are a couple. Um, you know, sections that I would like to, to say we were, that they were first made aware uh, that the town had, had related to Berkshire Gas marketing efforts to residents of the town that we had concerns. Um, when they received the call last Tuesday from the newspaper, um, they found out about it when they received the call from the newspaper. Uh, prior to his call, we were unaware that the town's, how the town's concerns, as we had not received any communication from the town concerning this matter. Now, as I remember, on Monday we tried to, we tried, you tried to uh, contact them, correct? Okay, without success. So, um, it's an annual. They explain how it's an annual effort, and that they use the list uh, uh, to make sure that their projects uh, don't affect the streets. But again. You know, I don't know how it worked out with Dalton Division Road, how you were notified with Dalton Division Road, or were you? Yeah. You were? Okay. That's when were you notified about Dalton Division Road gas work? Probably a couple months before they started. That was, that's a big project. Yeah. So, okay. Uh, All right. But they usually give us ample time as far as the permitting process. Okay. And we have a, a good right. relationship with the construction department. But in the next to the last paragraph of his letter, uh, and he said he, they didn't have time to uh, have a representative be here tonight, and that's why we received the letter. Um, but Mr. Farrell said in a recent conversation about this practice with Town Manager Walto, he has asked that Berkshire Gas, Gas's annual request for a planned road maintenance list be directed to him going forward instead of your highway superintendent, and we are happy to accommodate this request. So in the future, and I'm glad that they're going to do this, it's one source. If nothing else, we have one source now that's going to give the information. And I don't see where it's going to change until you change the uh, capital plan, capital improvement plan. Right. So, which, which is also approved by this board, so it's just yes. it be seamless. Right, right, exactly. You come up with the project, we approve the projects, and highway, Excuse. they do the projects, or they uh, execute the projects. So, okay, um, I'm, I'm glad they're, they're going to be doing that, as I said, contacting you, um, but what I would really like, and I don't know how we can communicate this to them, and I'm sure you're going to be receiving another letter next year, John, in regard to the same, wanting the same information. But it would be nice if Berkshire Gas could add a statement in the letter uh, for residents to confirm with the town about any construction prior to gas hookup. Something to that effect. Um, that's what I have. I'll leave it open to uh, discussion or comment from the board on this. Anything? Yeah, well, just that uh, John Rumpley is 100% right. His information shouldn't have been used as a marketing tool. 
very good phrasing yet, and it, which is exactly what they did. But on the other hand, they haven't done it on any other streets. I don't know if they did. Well, I, I, no mean, I think we would have heard about it. They did it on Deming Street. Did they? Yeah. Get the whole, all three I don't know. My, my mother-in-law who lives on Downing Street okay. got a letter and she, she wasn't interested so she just threw the letter. Oh, okay. So they did do it. Okay, okay. so they must have. Yeah. Um, this letter, in fact, says, says that. It says, uh, this is provided to our marketing department so that it can appraise non-customers on the listed streets of the impending work. So they must have contacted everybody. At least we're assuming that based on the letter. Yeah, but the request still, I mean, the request from Highway, there was never a mention of marketing on it when he, when he filled no. out that list, as I remember. I think, also, you might suggest to John that if John, if you get a letter next year on the same form letter, you can return it or turn it over to the town manager. Yeah, that's... Or return that's it, or right. give him a call and say, I turn it over to the town manager who uh, consults with the board regarding the definitiveness of any uh, reconstruction plan. It's it's unfortunate that the the information the, the wrong information got out and then then got out to the residents. Um, this way I think we'll avoid this problem sure. next time around. Uh, I did um, contact the resident in question with regard to this and uh, he, he is he has not contacted Berkshire Gas on this matter, and he doesn't intend to. He's just he's just going to let it let it ride, and that's that's the end of it. Um, he wanted to thank us for our efforts in bringing this to people's attentions, our, our attention, and uh, again, he was uh, he was he was happy with what we did. Um, the one thing that uh, was kind of uh, bothersome to him, in addition to what had taken place is when they did do the service uh, at his house is that they didn't have to touch the street they just had to dig up the grassy patch between the sidewalk and the road and that was it yep. so the t the street wasn't even touched and which side of the gas main is that yeah. and that's yeah the gas main is on his side of the road so anyway. uh, and i and i apologize for any inconvenience uh to the resident and uh he, uh, he said there wasn't really any need to do that. He said, but he thanked, he thanked me for that. Uh, so with him, <clears throat> everything is taken care of. So. Any other comments? This is a About side this? comment. Yeah. Up during the infamous Hoosier Time Street reconstruction over the last three years, mm -hmm. the gas stops at the intersection of East Street and East Hoosier Time Street. And there are six houses and a condo, condo complex beyond that. And all of them personally approached me and said, we wanted gas. Mm -hmm. I said, well, now is the opportunity to contact the gas company. Because the street's obviously going to be torn up or is being torn up. But mm -hmm. nothing ever became of it. I don't know what happened. Huh. I don't know. Now, those are the people that wanted it. I don't know. And here's the gas company. I'm, I was listening to people that really don't want it. So, uh, I don't know. know. Anything about that, John? You ever hear about that, John? No. I don't know why they didn't go all the way down. Probably the bridge, the car. No, well, uh, that's right, only as far as the bridge. The, what, one, two, three, four, five houses before the bridge? Yeah. And then they, that's one the house in the condo after the bridge. Mm -hmm. yeah. There's no gas service in those houses, at, in front of those houses, is what you're saying? Right. Okay. Couldn't they come down the other way, John, on the bridge? Come back that way? At the cross the bridge, I guess that's a big impediment. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, bridge very expensive. Both sides, there's a bridge, you know. Oh, okay. it's mm -hmm. But those, uh, I think, the five houses <clears throat> before the bridge, and they all wanted it, and they all talked. So contact the gas company. Well, John, thanks for your help, um, and thanks for being here tonight to uh, answer any questions. Uh, now that we know what we're going to do in the future, it shouldn't be an issue. So, okay. thank you. Okay, anything else before we go on to the next item? Okay. The next item, you might as well stay for this, John. Yeah, I <laughs> okay. uh, Is uh, opening up the road uh, at the uh, Old Barden property or uh, 
the road that goes up to our APR land that we acquired and to that North Mountain proposed park area. Um, I was contacted by a couple individuals uh, wanting to know or wanting to be able to go up and walk the property or use the road or get up, have access to North Mountain that way and I told them we couldn't do it at this point in time for a variety of reasons and uh, uh, until we until we know exactly what, what we need to do with the property. Uh, in the meantime, well, when I brought this up to uh, Ken, um, Mr. Barden contacted him because he still owns 30 acres above it on the other side of it. He owns a parcel of the other to the north of it. To the north of it, the and this is the only way to access that property. So uh, this is kind of where we're at, and Kenny, we're going to try and contact uh, yeah, town council on it. I had a discussion with town council last Thursday, and also had Dawn check on whether the land was properly insured. <clears throat> so uh, the land is insured; it's part of what we have insured. Uh, it's North Mountain access to North Mountain, the, the so-called um, North Mountain Park parcel, since it was transferred from the tax title custodian, remember, to the custody of the select board, town meeting, is under your jurisdiction and allowing access that is at your discretion completely. Uh, access to the other part of the farm that's still within the jurisdiction of the tax title custodian also requires her consent because she is the tax title custodian. So if you wanted to allow people up there, then it would, would be, and I've already briefed on about this as well. As when I asked her to check on the insurance. So uh, the third part of this is uh, Mr. Barton says that that road going up in there is some kind of right of way to which he has a right. So I told him I would probably talk to him. I said, I don't want to block you from getting there if you have some kind of right and you have a need to get there. But I will check with town council and discuss it with the select board. So town council said if he believes he has a right, he needs to demonstrate that by giving us information about what his rights are. And it shouldn't be up to the town to do that. He's, he needs to do that. So that, that's it, in summary. You can allow access to the property. You can allow access to all, the, all of the property with the son of the tax title custodian, uh, who I reasonably believe will agree with you if that's what you want to do. The property is insured. Um, I think our insurance agent got a little bit of indigestion. We said people might be hunting up there. Didn't say you couldn't do it, but kind of. So, um, <laughs> and if Mr. Barton wants to continuously use that right of way, that roadway, then he needs to demonstrate to us that he has a legal right to use it. At one point in time, I thought that road was an access for the radio tower that was up there. And that was, I believe, at one time owned or operated by Time Warner. Um, but since it's not being used, I don't know if. They're, use, they're using anything up there. It used to be a microwave tower, tower I believe. Mm -hmm. um, I, the, my only worry is we had one of the reasons that we posted it, and I don't. One of the reasons why we posted it was um, because of the contaminated right. property, as well as the. Uh, access to hang that property um, without permission and now now I think that that's that the access for hang is kind of we're beyond that because we're going to be setting up a, right. a, a an APR whatever what's the, uh, the, the uh, of the, yeah. yeah so uh, I, I think the only stumbling block is the um, the property that May be, may be contaminated. Uh, I, I would agree I don't, with you. I there's don't, a certain risk. I don't, we don't know what, what's really whether it's contaminated or not. That's right. It isn't what it's contaminated with. Mm -hmm. and, and, and so to allow anyone just even to tramp on it right now, uh, walk on it, that, that just may not be a good idea for liability reasons. Yes. I concur with Ed. 
a good assessment. And if when in doubt, don't do it. Yeah. I get that. But how do you separate that that parcel uh, from the from the others? Uh, what, what kind of a you know barrier? What <clears throat> kind of a with Mr. Barton, he has to show us that he has the right or he needs to use that property or has used that road for access to his property. If people wanted to go on the APR land in the forest or the field or whatever that is the APR land, um, they can access it other ways. They can access it from Windsor. They can access it from Chalet Road, really. The Chalet Road technically goes right through the middle of it. They um, can access it from the Duncan Brook property. Right. Um, yeah, that's, yeah. So, I don't know, unless we just post, no, we can't do that. I was going to say, if we just post the North Mountain Park land for the time being, I mean, we're not going to get, we're not going to get any type of answer on this for a while, next year sometime, hopefully, on whether, whether it is contaminated. Um, so what do, what do you think? How do we how do we go about it? We either leave it posted the way it is, or we post it differently. And to post it post it differently is still going to post that road because of that contaminated properties on both sides of the road and the road. We probably should post it all. Can and too, we only this board only has according to uh, Ken jurisdiction over that one parcel. Yeah. And Don Fahey has jurisdiction that either posted the town treasurer over the others. Mm -hmm. So that complicates the whole thing. It would put her in a bad position too. <coughs> if we started passing a buck and say, well, go see Don. So I think we should make a command decision and uh, post the whole track based on the uh, well, keep result. It, keep it posted as it is. Yes. Any other comments? I agree with that as much as I would like to have people up there being able to explore and do okay. what they want to yeah. do up there, but I think for the time being, it's just the prudent yeah. thing to do. Okay, do I have a motion then? Motion to keep the land posted as it is right now. I'll second that. Motion's been made and second. Is there any further discussion? Before we, do you have any comments, John? Because no, uh, you were using it this past winter. Yeah, I mean, when we put that gate up, we put it up, and uh, people weren't happy. When yes. We, we, um, so I, I think that's the main thing is the that gate was the access to park up there for mm -hmm. hunting. Um, but as you said, if, if you were to grant it, which you didn't, they could access it from Duncan Road. Okay. So you don't have, you don't have it, 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 it as a highway issue. It's not a. No. Okay, all in favor? <coughs> Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Thank you. Thanks, John. Okay, we have a couple of grants to accept. <coughs> See you later. Thanks again. Thank you. And we have one. Um, a grant that's uh, being accepted by the Dalton Culture Council from the Massachusetts Culture Council in the amount of $5,100. Um, for the purpose of continuing to promote the arts, humanities, and interpretive sciences for the town of Dalton. Do I have a motion? I make a motion that we accept a grant of $5,100 to the Dalton Cultural Council. I'll second that. Motion's been made. In and seconded to accept this grant uh, from the Massachusetts Cultural Council. Is there any or is there any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Okay. The second one is uh, to, ben to benefit the Dalton Police Department, and this is a uh, it's kind of an ongoing grant, uh, and I think it's it's wonderful because they have to replace bulletproof vests. Five years, 
Or still out there if it's five years. Uh, and this is um, uh, an amount of $1,987.50 from the Bureau of Justice Assistance Bulletproof Vest Partnership uh, under the Bulletproof Vest Partnership uh, program. So, may I have a motion? I make a motion we accept a grant of $1,987.50 to the Dalton Police. I'll second that. From the Bulletproof. Yeah, from the Bulletproof uh, partner, Vest Partnership. No second that. Motion to made and second. Is there further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Mark, I just ask you out of curiosity, uh, what does it wear out? I mean, does, there, does the fabric the, not be as bulletproof? That's exactly. That's what happens. It starts to deteriorate between the okay. sweat and the heat and then the cold. Oh, I see. Right. Well, we don't want so that. They've gotten okay. a lot better over the years because okay. they've gotten a lot lighter and everything, but they're still. They're, yeah, that five year standard's been in place forever, forever yeah. it seems like. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, we have a uh, rural common can't talk tonight. Rural Commonwealth support letters, and there was a uh, um, email that was sent out um, to the towns requesting that we uh, send these letters to. Senior Deputy Commissioner of Local Services and uh, uh, the Secretary Beaton, Matthew Beaton, Executive Office of Energy and Environmental Affairs. And it's in regard to state owned land, and when the state does purchase the land or make these purchases, it has a great impact on rural communities uh, with regard to their tax base. Can you explain that, Any? Uh, so that we understand what this tax base thing is, Ken, or do you know well, yourself? Not that well, except that state-owned land, we've got plenty of that here, yeah. um, has never returned what it might have returned had it been held in private hands. So it's always been an issue of contention between rural municipalities which have state-owned land and the, and the Commonwealth. And it doesn't get much play in Boston because it's out here. It's in the area of the Commonwealth with little political plow. Okay. So uh, this this uh, nonprofit agency, the rural called Rural Commonwealth. Do you remember they had a meeting here last year? Has been talking about these issues, and so they've provided us with two suggested letters. The first letter really says, um, you know, we don't know about how we're being compensated. Most communities don't really understand it, and you ought, ought to explain it better to all of us. The second letter says, you know, there's a, there's a provision in the Code of Massachusetts regulations which requires public hearings in the case of the state acquiring land uh, that the process of consensual eminent domain, that's exactly what happened with the town force, was consensual eminent domain. Now, we knew they were buying that land because they are buying it from the town. But in other, uh, in other purchases, they're buying it from private parties, and the town gets no notice of that. So what they're asking for is that the CMR be changed, Code of Massachusetts Regulations, be changed or be viewed as encompassing uh, purchases of, of land so that the communities know what's going on. Do they pay an actual uh, price per acre? Or is this payment in lieu of taxes, or is it? It's a pilot payment, and, and what I see on the budget is just a number. And I know they determine it in some fashion, but that's usually what we get is here's how much it is, and we just put it in our revenue plan. Yeah, but it's nowhere near. No, and I've never, I've, you know, I've never myself tried to find out what the difference is. I just know that it's not equal to what we would be getting. Okay. It sounds like a good idea. Uh, comments, suggestions. <coughs> Does our state rep support this? That I don't know. That I don't know. Yeah, um, I certainly haven't discussed it with them. This has to. They wanted these letters in by a certain date, and I don't remember. Was it November? Yeah. I don't think it's 
this is. I thought it was. It doesn't sound like you do any harm. I I don't see where it would do any harm. It would it would help us rather than hurt us. And it would also give support to I'm sure the other towns that are in this fine or find themselves in this fine would like the support. I uh I support it, uh, sending out these letters. But I want to say that there was a November date that they wanted these things. Yeah, I don't recall some. I support it also. Mm -hmm. Well, why don't we have a, uh, a motion on it then? Third letter or both? Well, if they if both could be drafted, I would say I would say both. Okay. Um, and then we have it ready for our signature when, whenever. Uh, yeah. Uh, it is prepared. Yeah. Well, this, the second one here, you just fill in your name, leave your town. Yeah. 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 It's kind of easy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. The well, first one. Uh, so. Okay. First one, you just basically make a copy of it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, I make a motion. We draft the two letters of support to. Oh, second that. Rural. Oh, sorry. The state owned uh, rural financial. I guess. It would be rural commonwealth. Yeah, rural, com rural commonwealth. In support of. Uh, yeah, what you just said. Right. I'll okay. second that. Okay. Motion to made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Thank you. Okay. So we're a school building committee report. I have quite a bit to. Um, and these were questions that were brought up at our last meeting as for timelines, uh, votes, uh, whatever. So I'm just going to go down the list. If you want to stop me when I'm talking about this, please do and ask a question uh, or make a comment. It's fine. Uh, October 10th, uh, building committee representatives met with the MSBA to address uh, questions about the initial design of the new school. On the 30, and by the 31st of October, the MSBA will give that approval on the initial design. On January 24, 2019, the school committee will vote on the schematic design and <coughs> cost estimate of the project. On February 6, 2019, the MSBA will, will uh, approve, or not approve, the design, um, the schematic design, and the estimate as well. So from that point on is when we will know what the school, what form the school will, will take and how much the project cost is. It is planned to have a district vote on March 30th or April 6th. March 30th or April 6th. And they're both Saturdays, I believe. And this will be a popular vote like it was last time uh, for the last um, vote on this project. Um, by 4-10-2019, uh, the MSBA will give its approval, final approval. Now, if the district votes down the project, on April, on March 30th or April 6th, there's a 120 day window in which a second vote may be taken for the project. So it could be voted up. If it's voted down, it could be voted up on a second vote if in fact it isn't voted up on the first. Who determines the, whether there's a second vote or not? The district probably. Because the, the district is paying for the, for the voting. It's not a, it's not a town thing. 
Uh, Do they give some new information or some reason why they think they have a new vote? And I, I would think so, yeah. that they would at that time. If it, that, if that's only if it's voted down? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, can I just follow up with you? When you say the district, you mean the school committee would make a decision? School committee will make the decision on the 24th no, the, on a, of January. On a, a second vote. No, um, yes, I would imagine that it would be the school committee to yeah. say, yeah, we'll have a second vote. Yeah. A second vote. Um, By an up or down vote of the committee, whatever. whatever well, it, it would probably be because of a down vote, of voting it down. Yeah, but then they would vote up or down to proceed with a second vote. Oh, yeah. 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 And, I, and I'm, I'm, it seems to be the logical way to go about it. I have to ask that specifically, but it would seem that they're the ones that decide when the vote's going to take place. Right. They're the ones that decide yeah. if a vote takes place, yeah. so yes. You see, your committee probably doesn't have any authority to call votes or no. rec we we recommend votes. We'll recommend, yes. Yeah. 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 All right. Um, any other questions about that timeline at all? Yeah. Just, uh, Ken, I mean, yeah. yeah. A question for Ken. Yeah. Ken, if this passes on, uh, say, April 6th, and uh, requires a uh, request by the town meeting, I mean the town meeting, the electorate on the second Tuesday, Monday in May, would you propose a uh, debt exclusion vote on the second Monday in May? Well, that's a good thought. It would be up you know, to the board when we start to put together the warrant. Do you have the time? Or do yeah, you have the time, time, line? time frame? Yeah. Is the time frame there? Well, I think so. I think we can put the we could put the ballot question on if the thing isn't voted positively. You know, it, it, I guess the debt, the debt exclusion might not apply. Might encourage yeah. the school district to hold another vote if Dalton passes the debt exclusion. Yeah. Mm. I, okay, I'm lost already. Um, so, even if, if before the vote is even taken, we could set up the warrant for a yeah. debt exclusion because we will know. We'll have to. Part of the warrant, that right. exclusion vote will be part of the warrant, which we typically finish up towards the mid to the end of March. Yeah, get it printed and all, and uh, then we have to submit the ballot, and that goes in the beginning of April. So but it could be on the ballot, and say if it's not even needed, we just don't yeah. count it. But okay, it brings you another question: If we put this on the ballot and start talking about it in March? Well, before anything is decided, wouldn't that be a, a, a unethical disclosure on our part or pressure? I mean, we're not supposed to be involved in ballot questions. We're not supposed to. By putting it on there, is presuming that it's going to pass. Um, well, I don't know. Well, they're going to. They are going to make a decision in January, trying to decide whether they're going to, at what time they'll hold the vote. Oh, it'll definitely be one of those two days. So they're only a week apart. I mean, it's it's just a matter of the sixth. Yeah, it's the thirtieth or the sixth, and that that's more or less you can you can count on that for a vote, as long as it's approved by the school committee. It's approved by the MSBA, which I don't see where it isn't. I I would assume that it will be. Um, so I think that this uh, this timeline will go as sure. as it's as it's uh, set up. You could write the question too to say if it if it is approved, correct? No, you, data exclusion questions have to. There's a script in the law, and you yeah. just have to copy it. That's what, that's, that's how it goes. Yeah. Do you approve the, you know, the um, bonds or notes to be issued for the construction of? Do you have to have the exact price? Exactly. I mean, the the actual cost. Um, no, in fact, the actual costs are bonds and notes. So you don't have to put in a cost like twenty-seven million dollars. No. It might go what, better if you don't put down twenty-seven million. <laughs> what typically? <laughs> what typically? <laughs> what typically happens is, in the usual course of events, yeah. the whatever is being borrowed is approved at a town meeting. It has to be approved by a two-thirds vote, and many times it's subject to a debt exclusion. Yeah. So you get that part of it, and the other part is the debt exclusion, and no money appears. Are we going to be able to present from the town what impact it would have on town services, or if this vote goes through? You or can, 
you can have a you can have a warrant article and you can present it at a town meeting, even if the town you could take a vote. It's not gonna you could take a vote at a town meeting. It would probably it'd be only advisory, but uh, you can do you can have a report, you can have a report with a vote, whatever this board's pleasure is. Uh, I mean if we know uh, we gotta borrow this much money, what's it gonna do to the town? We should you can have a non binding ballot question with all the information on it. We should know all that by the 24th of January. We should have that information. Ken, how would you structure that? You say if we wanted to inject our opinion on the board on a bond and indebtedness ballot question at the annual election, we could place an article on there explaining the consequences. I think you could have a non. I, I think you could have a non-binding ballot question. A ballot question, not an article to tell me. You can have an article to tell me. Hmm. I don't, you know, with the understanding that the select board can't take an active, can't can't actively promote a ballot question. Or not but you can, yeah. you, you can you can do pretty we much can, what you want for we can draft article. any ballot question we want. We just right. can't promote it. You can't promote it. No, this is what I was getting at before. I mean, it's just a fact sheet. This, if this happens, this is what's going to happen to the town. Right. Or what could happen. Well, you could, uh, you we could, have to discuss that anyways because we have to set the tax rate at some point in time. You, know? you, could, call for a, you could call for a ballot vote prior to the school district vote. You want to get another sense of the town. Wouldn't, wouldn't bind the school district, but they would get a sense of, they'd, have, they'd hold the vote anyway. But you have to have a special election. Prior to their district wide. But we. we uh, oh, never mind. Go ahead. It's just not binding. Right. But you, but you suggested this is an alternative before the election. You could. I mean, I'm just, I'm just thinking. Yeah, just throwing it out. Well, that's why we're here, yeah. I mean, the, the normal way, I mean, the more normal way to do it would be to put it on the annual town election as a, as a ballot question. Yeah. But that's binding. I, I don't think. And I don't know, we'd have to talk to council about it, but I don't think putting the debt exclusion question on the annual town election would have the same, it would be the, um, promoting that particular question. It's just that we're being, we're trying to be prepared. We have to meet certain time frames. Mm -hmm. But, you know, we'd be, you know, we always yeah, review this with holding, town council. We have to hold a whole we have to hold special, special election. A special election yeah. if we don't do it at the annual town right. election, which is just a lot of work, really. So, any other comments about the schedule? Okay, Lots to think about a couple, a couple more things, and I, I, I went over this with Ken. The, the type of what they call the type of construction delivery that's going to be used or is recommended is the called a CM at risk, the construction construction management at risk. You know that better than I. You explained it to me. Could you explain it to the board again? <laughs> I hope I can because board? I didn't review. Construction manager at risk really puts the risk of cost overruns in the hand of the construction manager. So they, he's got an upset limit he has to live within, and he has to deliver the product for that price. Mm -hmm. And he can't come back and ask for a change order. Yeah, that's. Uh, they all, they also said that there would be more contractors bidding using that process. As no. well as, as saving time, they estimate that it could save as much as six months on the on the project, in construction. And I don't know why. I, I don't have a reason to give you that says yeah. why that will happen. So. And I don't know why because I'm not familiar. You know, I I know it exists in the law. I've never used it myself, so I can't okay. comment. Uh, the construction of this new building will be will be done uh, at a level, the, the energy efficiency level of the LEED, L-E-E-D, silver level. Uh, and that cost has already been assumed in the estimates that they are giving us. And that in and of itself will increase the reimbursement that the district gets from Originally, it's 54 percent. Would be another two percent, which would bring it up to 56 percent. Uh, there was also talk about um, making the the building a net zero. Uh, 
a net zero building, which means, correct me if I'm wrong, okay, which means that you um, gather your renewable energy on site, whether it's through geothermal energy, solar, whatever else it may be. The way they describe the geothermal um, area, it's about a 50,000 square foot area. It's underground, 125 wells, four to 500 feet deep. Um, and don't shoot the messenger because I have no idea about this stuff. <laughs> if, it, if it does, yeah. Um, and then that that would be great, but they also need about a hundred thousand square feet of solar arrays on that property, which means not only the building, but the only way they could do it is probably put it on the parking lots and make the parking lots like a carport type parking lot. These are things that were discussed. And they estimate um, an additional cost if that were done. If that were done, about seven to eight million dollars. So, and the payoff for something like that, roughly speaking, on the energy that you would save over the years, it would take somewhere in the neighborhood of 25 or so years to recoup that money, which is about the same amount as the bond that will be made. Um, they're figuring 25 or 30 years. Um, and then Unibank is the bonding, uh, the financing agency that the, the district is going to be uh, using. And, um, and it all depends on what type of bonds you um, take. It's either short term, which may be short term in the beginning, because it's kind of a pay as you go for the first few years. But then all of a sudden that payment's got to be made, the balloon payment. So then you get into your long term bonding. Um, and depending on what you do depends on the rate. And there's really no idea. Um, Unibank was saying that they're they're figuring out about four to five interest rate increases over the next couple of years, something like that. Yeah. So mm -hmm. uh, right now, and right now their their bond rate, and I'm not sure if it's short term or not, was 1.75, um, which Ken was saying is a really good rate, but um, must be very short. Is a problem. <laughs> probably yeah, short term bond anticipation is most likely. Yeah. Yeah. Ken, at, at one time, did you say that the t maximum term of a bond issue for a municipality like Dalton is 25 years? I think it's 20. 20. Go back and look. Yeah. Well, is it but, different for a district? But for certain, well, for certain, it, it depends on what you're borrowing for. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's what happened at the last meeting. And the next meeting is uh, sometime in November. I'm not sure. Beginning of November is the next meeting. So it's uh, moving along and I'll uh, keep you updated as uh, things take place. Unless you have any other questions that I might be able to answer at this point in time. Just one comment about the peak roof and stuff. This is the same outfit that built Taconic? Yes. Uh, they already had two leaks of Taconic. Uh, so called flat roof. I'm, I'm glad you mentioned that. They are arranging tours of the Taconic uh, school for any interested parties, like select boards or building committee members or anybody who wants to. So if you're interested in going on a tour of Taconic, let me know. I'll just let the, the building committee chair know and they'll set up times when we can go have a tour if you want. Okay. Give me an email or, or whatever, unless you know now that you'd want to go on a tour. Okay. Okay, um, okay Ken, town manager updates. Okay, I'll, I'll try to keep this very brief. Um, the first thing I want to tell you is that we've reached the end of the road with the tra transfer of OPEB funds. We got a notification from the state that our application to move our OPEB trust from the certificate of the certificates of deposit that we now have it in 
has been accepted by the state. There's a mandatory 60-day waiting period uh, based on a notification that we had to give to the town clerk. So that money will be transferred in mid-December and we'll go from earning just under 2% interest to earning about 9.5% interest. So it was a very good suggestion our chairman made a, a year or so ago. It took us a whole year to get to the process. I want to particularly thank the people who served on my little advisory committee. There's a lot of work behind the scenes, and I want to mention them uh, specifically. It was, of course, John Bartels and Chair Messenger, retirees, uh, two accountants, uh, Rick Lombardi and Sue Vigeant, uh, retired banker Mike Hoffman, former finance committee chair Terry Williams, and our treasurer Don Fahey. They did a lot of work over the winter interviewing firms and doing analysis. I wanted to thank too our retirement board came in and spoke to us about how they invest funds. And so that was very successful. I'm, I'm happy and I think the town will benefit for years to come. It's going to lower our liability in the out years because of the rates they earn. We're, instead of being having $1.7 million in savings accounts, we're part of a $70 billion trust fund that the state holds for all retirees across the state, all state employees and those communities that choose to put their OPEB funds in the state retirement re trust. So the return rate was really good too. I yeah, remember better than most, it's, if it, not all. It's had a long run rate of return over the last ten years, of about nine and a half percent. They can, it's, it's so massive, and they have such good advice that they can be able to diversify. And, and are, are the funds in there now? Not till mid December. Okay. Yeah, mid December the transfer will take period? place. Yeah, we. Days? We have to give. We had to give some kind of statutory notice to the town clerk, and it's 60 days from when we did that, and so that's mid-December. But the, we've been accepted uh, into the fund, so I'm very pleased about that. Uh, the the MEMA grant that we've been working on for three years. We we, we had another conference call today with BEMA and FEMA. Another. We think, you know, we, we have to get some information into them by the end of this month, and we think we're going to be able to make a reasonable attempt at it based on all the information we've gathered. We've had, believe it or not, I want to tell you this is interesting data. Based on the flood gauge down in Coltsville that measures the cubic foot per second of flow, we can tell when there were floods. There were floods in 1927, 1936, 1938, 1948, 1980, 2005, and 2011. So that's the data we had to we had to do some manipulation with the with the data and give them something called um, recurrence intervals of floods and all that kind of what size were the floods and had to crank it into some cost benefit software which was fun to play with but it was a lot of work we're yeah. almost done the, the good news is if we are successful we'll get a sizable grant to improve the drainage at the old Dalton High that's really what it's all about that's why it's worth working on uh, and. The 1980 study that was done by the Soil Conservation Service, USDA Soil Conservation Service, pointed out two ways, really three ways we could have take care of a hundred year flood so-called. And that's a, to put in a, a, replace the 42 inch pipe that, we, that Walker Brook has channeled in with a 60 inch pipe, a five foot pipe, or run a pipe alongside the existing pipe of about four feet, 48 inches, or leave the pipe in place and then um, we have a stream above ground again. So uh, we've eliminated that because the permitting is, is just not feasible in order to get the job done. We think the least cost alternative right now is to put another pipe in place alongside the existing pipe. And the engineers, Hill Engineer helped us before, they're helping us again. They're costing that out. So I'm, I'm reasonably optimistic, but we'll, we'll see. Ken, would it be all the way down the Main Street or just yeah. on our property? No, it would be all the way down Main Street. It's about 2,000 feet or something like that. Goes from Walker Brook yep. all the way down and it empties out um, right Street. by the post office, mm -hmm. River Street. Yeah. Can the uh, study that Tyne and Mon did that yeah. we, we used for the committee, um, do they have a copy of that report also? Yeah, they do. Okay. Yes, they have that. What's the cost? Well, the last time we estimated putting in a five foot culvert and repl totally replacing it, it was $800,000 total cost. Okay. So we're looking at ballpark. That's that's ballpark. We don't want to exceed that because then the cost benefit analysis doesn't work. There's a, there's an interesting I don't mean to get in too much into the weeds on it, it's, it's kind of fascinating because to this cost benefit software, they added some new modules. One is for lost labor productivity and the other is for mental distress. 
So I was able to add that but simply based on the senior center because if you wipe out the senior center, some people are going to lose their jobs. And 265 citizens, residents of Dalton, won't be able to have partake of those services. So that really increases the, the benefits of uh, doing this kind of a project. Hmm. Oh. Interesting. So the other thing I wanted to report on is the uh, town hall insulation project that was awarded to Barry Architects uh, for a total cost of 17000 The first phase of 13500 is really going to take the original um, energy audit that we did and turn that into plan, bid plans and specifications. The second piece won't be done unless there's funding to actually build it. But they started today, they were on site going through, going through the town hall and uh, I'm excited that, that that project is moving forward. Uh, and lastly, on the LED light project, uh, we got back a signed purchase and sale agreement from, from Eversource. We filed additional purchase orders with a firm called Gray Bar, which is the vendor of the, the lighting. And we're taking care of some little details there, but it still looks like we're on track for a go about the end of November to start installing the lights. Good. And that's it, Mr. Chairman. Very good. Any questions for uh, Mr. Walton? Ken, I noticed I was at the senior center uh, Saturday afternoon. The, uh, oh, yeah. they, and I noticed that the construction company, I forgot their name already, is on site. They put up a fence, yeah. all kinds of other barriers, all kinds of equipment on site. So it looks like they're. They got the windows sealed up. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. for the asbestos yeah. yeah. removal. They're ready to go here or if they haven't started already they, today. They must work a four day week. I, they're from Utica, yeah. correct? They're from Utica. Yeah. yeah. Probably working yeah. four, ten hour days. So. Yeah, because uh, I noticed yeah. all of a sudden yeah. they were. They were gone mid-afternoon on Thursday, oh, really? yeah. and uh, they cleaned up, and you know they keep the place pretty neat even when they're out there. And uh, uh, I don't think they came back on Friday. Mm -hmm. So, well, it doesn't matter. I mean, you know, no. they got a two or three-hour commute too. It's a long way. Yeah. Well, it's well, it'll, it'll be good. It'll be good. Thank you. All right, items for future agendas. I'm going to take off uh, the junk car item, Berkshire Gas, and the Halloween one because we're going to be announcing that in our announcements. So are there any additions? Anything that anybody has? Okay, we'll keep it as is then. Thank you. And I'll try not to lose this one. I'm going to give the other one. Um, Remarks of the select board. Ken, uh, is it possible to give us a list of what we owe for debt and when we're going to pay it off? Yes. This would be helpful. Do you want it on a, an agenda item? Why don't we do that, John? It's kind of small. Yeah. How do you, okay, do you want a... Uh, Updated debt list? How do you want to word it? Schedule, schedule of indebtedness. <laughs> Okay. It'd be interesting to see what we got and when it's going to be paid off. Uh, are you suggesting long term or short term or both? Both, yeah. Anything we owe. Okay. And one other thing for Ken. Uh, the energy credits, it's almost the end of October for the yeah. Pow Pow. Is there any reason that they, they've given us that we're not getting these credits yet that they promised us in October? Why don't we schedule that for, put it on the items for future agendas? Yeah. Out, I, I do all your report on it. Okay, how do you want me to, how do you want it on here? Oh, net metering update. Okay. I can put both of those things on for next meeting. Um, yes, I think we can get them both done. Thank you. Okay. Any comments? Okay. Which brings us to our announcements. <coughs> the state election on Tuesday, November 6, 2018, will be held at the Dalton Community House, 400 Main Street, Dalton, Mass. A link to the Commonwealth of Massachusetts website, which allows voters to check their voter registration status, can be found at www.dalton-mass.gov. 
mass.gov. Click on the town departments, town hall, town clerk, elections, and click the link to voter registration. Note also that early voting will be available from today, Monday, October 22nd, through Thursday, October 25th, 2018, and Monday, October 29th, through Thursday, November 1st, 2018, from 8.30 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. in the office of the Town Clerk, Town Hall, 462 Main Street, Dalton, Mass. For further information, please call 413-684-6111, extension 14 or 15. Trick or Treat will be held on Halloween, Wednesday, October 31st, 2018, from 5.30 p.m. to 7 p.m. The Dalton Police Department is reminding the citizens of Dalton of a winter parking ban which goes into effect on November 15, 2018 and will be in effect until April 15, 2019. Winter is here. The Fitch Hoose House is now open through October on Saturdays from 12 p.m. to 4 p.m. I hold office hours by appointment. For further information, call 413-684-6111, extension 11, or my home phone number, 413-684-2526. And if you can't make it here, I can come to you, if need be. The Dalton Beautification Commission is seeking volunteers to assist in maintaining the Commission's established garden spaces in the community. If interested, please contact the town manager's office at 413-684-6111, extension 11. State Representative Paul Mark holds office hours at the Dalton Town Hall, 462 Main Street, in the Callahan Room on Tuesdays from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m., with the exception of the third Tuesday of each month. On the third Tuesday, office hours are 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. at the Town Hall, and from 1 p.m. to 4 p.m. at the Dalton Senior Center. You can reach his office at his district number, which is 413-464-5635. I declare that an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the negotiating position of the public body. I move we go into executive session to conduct a strategy session in preparation for negotiations for union and non-union personnel and not return to open session. I'll second that. Motion's been made and seconded to go into executive session. Roll we'll call vote, Mr. Boyle. Yes. Mr. Howell. Yes. Mr. Bishop. Yes. Mr. Stroud. Yes. Mr. Bartels. Yes. We will be in recess for a few minutes. <laughs>